Good morning. How's my family this morning? Good having you all here for this. Uh, thank you. You bet. Father's Day. What a great time for dads. And, and we're glad that uh, you all took time to come spend time with us today, especially the Father's Day out there. We do want to say Happy Father's Day to you. You know, today is, uh, as, as fathers, it's our day, right? We get to do whatever we want or whatever we please, right? Isn't that the way that works? <laughs> You're self-inflicting yourself, though. We didn't make you do that. <laughs> you know, uh, Father's Day is a lot of fun. And guys, like I say, we kind of get to go do what we want to. Yesterday, we got to go fish in a bass tournament and... Uh, you know, kind of on Father's Day weekend, a bunch of guys, and it was a lot of fun. Somebody won. <laughs> I won't mention who. But it was good. And, and uh, you know, guys, today uh, it's your day, and, you know, you're, I hope your uh, wives are good with that, that they let you do what you uh, want to do on Father's Day. And if they don't, I have a video for you. Ron, let's play that video right quick. Ew! Ew, 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 yuck! He just caught a fish, a bass, a bass. I don't, I don't know, they smell the same. Guess where he took me? Fishing, yeah, fishing, water and everything. Oh, I know, they're so yucky. He almost made me touch a worm, ugh. He said fishing, so I thought we were going on daddy's yacht and getting sushi. Well, he is cute though. You should see him in his little fishing outfit. But whatever, look at me. I worked out yesterday at the gym, treadmill, three minutes. Mm-hmm, almost worked up a sweat. All I know is when we get back to dry land, me? eBay, me or the boat. Or the boat. Of, course oh, of course it's gonna pick me. I don't know, the boat's kind of sparkly though. My outfit matches it and I did not even plan that. <laughs> That's so funny. I can get another guy that doesn't take me fishing. <laughs> I know. Be careful, ladies. Thank God I have a wife that likes to fish, so we don't have that issue. I don't need one of those buttons in my boat, so. There you go. Well, I'd like to share with you men today what it takes to be a good father. It takes being a man, functioning as a man, acting like a man, and working like a man. And leading your household as a Christian man. It's hard to be a good father until you're a good man. Amen? And it's getting more difficult in today's society to find good men anymore. You know, from the past, we had people like Roy Rogers. Which was a great example for fathers. And to be a man. And uh, we're losing some of that in today's society of good men. I thank God that we have many good men here at the church. We can always use a few more. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. If you would turn with me there this morning. Ezekiel chapter 22, being at verse 30. It says, I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found no one. Right here, God points out the difference between a godly man leading and a weak man leading. The godly man serves as a middleman that is willing to stand in the gap while serving God and serving the needs of the people. And being an example of Christ for your children or even your grandchildren can and will impact the future of their, their, their years to come. You know, today many, many children are missing their fathers in their homes. Even the fathers that are home are still absent because they don't take time to be a dad when they are there. Many times when dads are at home, they're too busy, too tired, 
are just too lazy to spend time with their family. James Dobson cited a Cornell University study showing that fathers of preschool children on the average spend 37.7 seconds per day in real contact with their youngsters. 37.7 seconds per day with their kids. In contrast, the study indicated that children watch television approximately 54 hours a week. You want to know what's wrong with our society and our children in this world today? Starts right there. We're not giving and providing and investing the quality time that our children need, especially with their fathers. This is where us dads as role models need to be real men and stand in the gap for our families. We as dads should be good providers and good Christian leaders for our household. The Bible's pretty straightforward about that. A Christian, as Christian fathers and leaders of our household, we should have a covenant with the Lord to raise our children in the ways of the Lord. Now think about that covenant. God was all about covenants, and that's we should have that covenant with the Lord. We should make a covenant with the Lord that we will raise our children in the ways of the Lord. Those that complain, well, my child doesn't want to go to church. Who's the adult? And you can suggest in a firm way. You know, there are many people that tell me that they got drugged to church, you know, when they were younger. So don't, don't give us the excuse your child doesn't want to be in church. Be the example and lead them to church. Amen. Proverbs 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 6. Just flip backwards there a little ways. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Start children off in the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. And some of you may have the King James Version, which says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. It's the example we set for our children that make a difference in the way they think, the things they do, and their character in, in explicitly. Our primary job as fathers, as it is for God, is to build good character and values in our children. Everything else can spring from that place right there. Our character, who we are and what we stand for, is most important in our relationship with God and our families. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. I know we're jumping back and forth. Go right back to close to where you were. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. It says, Fathers, do not evasive. I know, I can say it. I did 10 times. <laughs> Evasorate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction in the Lord. Right here, Paul shares with us this scripture that as fathers, we are to be careful. Not to antagonize our children. Instead of pushing them towards anger and frustration, Christian fathers should show their children love and understanding and provide them with God-centered teaching and discipline. Now understand the Bible doesn't say you don't discipline your children. It doesn't say that at all because some people think, well, you know, it, it, nowadays they're trying to tell us we shouldn't spank our kids. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. There is a way to discipline your children. Some people go overboard. That's for sure. But the Bible's real clear that we should be teaching them. We should show them love and understanding. Because sometimes in today's society, we really don't understand what's going on in their head, right? It's like some alien came down and just sucked their brain out, didn't it, sometimes, you know, with some of these kids. So we should be teaching them, and even with discipline. And as dads, we should model with Christ-like self-control when dealing with our children. Simply reveal a God-centered life while training, correcting, and warning them according to the Bible. So there's a, there's a way to do it, and there's a way to do it right. And there's times when you've got to be a little tougher. But once again, we are the example, and that's what, how we need to lead. We just need to be real men and Christian fathers. Leading as an example 
of Jesus Christ. And once again, I relate back to real men. Do we have real men that can stand in the gap? And today, it's not just about being a father, as we may think on Father's Day, our, of our children, but being a good husband to our wives. Being a good husband gives an example of what a father's role in the family should be. So it's not just about being a father to your children. It's about being a good husband to your wife. It's about leading your household and setting that example to your children of what a family unit would look like. Some wives think their husbands are good dads, but they could be better husbands. I've heard that. And ladies, understanding your husbands better helps them become better dads. Say, I never thought about that. If you understand your husband, you can actually help him become a better dad. Men have a code when speaking sometimes. I know that. Some of the women have trouble figuring out the code. And, you know, I'm going to help you out this morning. If you've got a pen, you might want to write some of these down. Here are some translations of that code that might just help you ladies out with understanding your husband better. When a man says it would take too long to explain, he means I have no idea how it works. <laughs> when a man says, take a break, honey, you're working too hard, he means I can't hear the TV over your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and when a man says, I can't find it, my wife will like this one. He means it didn't fall into my outstretched hand, so I'm completely clueless. <laughs> and the final one. When a man says, I'm not lost, I know exactly where we are. He means no one will ever see us alive again. <laughs> Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word, and to present her to her himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed it and care for their body just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and his wife must respect her husband. You know, we run into this before where we're talking about love and respect. You know, the husband will say, well... I'll love her when she respects me. And the wife will say, I'll respect him when he loves me. And it's a vicious cycle. And it goes round and round and round. In this way that you should love one another and respect one another is an example for your children in true leadership. Following these instructions as a husband and a father can be a great example for your children. The role model you will exhibit to your children will be invaluable for their future. And guys you don't have to be a superman. To be a super dad. Just spending time with your children. Is what's needed. A super dad leads by example. Your children. Believe it or not. Want to be like you. Children many times. Imitate their parents. And all children. Seek their parents approval. Especially their father's. And that masculine influence in their life is a huge deal. Some people are going to get upset about that, but it's true. Be a real man with your kids. Teach them. 
You know, I had a, uh, once again, I met with a family here recently and asked the, the kids how much they had learned from their dad. And my question was, how many of you can drive a standard shift vehicle? And just about every one of them raised their hand. Are you teaching your kids? Are you really spending time with them and allowing them to see you as an example of Christ? This week when we went on this trip for, for a week with a bunch of crazy Christian people, it wasn't about the competition. That's what we kept hearing. We have this crazy thing that we do. Everybody's got their own little UTV car-like Jeep vehicles. And at night, I make up these clues, and I go out and set these orange survey flags. And each one of them's got a number on it. And each team has a number that they got to go find their own flag. And it's not about the competition, right? I kept hearing that. Well, it's no big deal. Yeah, Ron's back there with his big flag, you know. So we had a young man that shared with us around the campfire of um, one of those impact moments. Uh, he, uh, I won't mention his name, but uh, yeah, there's no, yeah, it was. He said that his dad kept reminding them as on his team that it wasn't about the competition. But when we said go, his dad outran everybody getting to the UTV. And he said he'd never seen his dad run that hard but one time in a marathon. Of a simple thing that a child saw in his father, it happened right there. And that was the great examples. And, and I pray that we had, I think, 38 from the church, uh, uh, visitors there at this deal, and I uh, pray that we set good examples. When it comes to competition, I'm not so sure about that. We had to do a lot of prayer on that one. <laughs> My wife instigated a lot of that. So, you know, being a parent's a lot of work, and being a dad is a tough job, especially with all the demands for our attention. Research shows that dads have a huge impact on their kids, both physically. And spiritually, dads make all the difference in a household. Charles Francis Adams, he was a 19th century political figure and a diplomat that kept a diary. One day he entered, went fishing with my son today, a wasted day. His son, Brooke Adams, also kept a diary, which is still in existence today. On that same day, Brooke Adams made this entry. Went fishing with my father, the most wonderful time of my life. The father thought he was wasting his time while fishing with his son, but his son saw the investment of time. The only way to tell the difference between wasting and investing is to know one's ultimate purpose in life and judge it accordingly. The question is are you investing? In your children today. Today let us be the dads. Our children need. And want. Let us be the dads that teaches our children. How to live. By how we live. There are so many. Distractions in this world today. That is causing harm. To our children. And it starts with our leadership. Are we failing them? Are we letting government raise them? Are we letting the TV raise them? Or someone else raise them? Are we raising them in the ways of the Lord? There's so many influences. Many guys think, well, it's really important that I raise my son in this way. That he understands how to be a real man. But dads, you don't know maybe how important it is. To raise your daughters also. They look to you. And many daughters will want to marry men just like their father. So are you the example? Dads, I pray that you all realize what a huge difference 
you make in your child's lives. That you lead by example by living a godly life, keeping your anger in check, treating your wife like a queen, your son like a winner, and your daughter like a princess. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today. Father, we just come thankful and humble to you. Father, we're thankful for these uh, real men that are here in our church. Father, we're thankful that uh, they have stepped in to fill the gap, and they do raise their children in the ways of the Lord. Father, we thank you that uh, they're investing time in their children, and we pray that they continue to invest that time in their children, Father, that they would be the dad that their kids need, that they would be Christ-like in everything they do. And Father, that the young daughters of these men look at them and say, I'd be proud to marry a man just like them. So Father, be with these dads here today. I pray today that they enjoy their day. And Father, that they spend it with their family, that they might uh, grow a little closer each time they do. Father, we thank you for everyone here. We thank you that you came and sat among us, that your presence be felt throughout this building. We love you. We praise you. We give all the glory to you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.